welcome to another episode of BRICS Garden Book Lecture Series. So we have started this BRICS Garden Book Lecture Series few months back. So we have covered many aspects of uh, seeds, uh, seedlings, growing medium, containers, raising plants and uh, planting them in containers and uh, some other issues. So the next issue is uh, the uh, designing the uh, terrace garden. For designing, uh, you need to understand some other factors that govern the, uh, the uh, health or the growth of the plants. One such important factor that governs the health of the plant is light. It is, it is sunlight or the direct light. So uh, you, we all know, we all know that it is not possible to grow plants in complete darkness. So you need light to grow plants. So uh, especially 4 to 5 hours of direct sunlight is must. So if your expectation is fruit, if your expectation is flower, if your expectation is roots or tubers or underground parts. So uh, uh, that way, so you need to, you need to provide uh, very good light for crops like tomato, chilli, brinjal, maybe capsicum or carrot, radish. So all these kind of crops where the expectation is fruit or the tubers, you need to have more light. At least 4 to 5 hours of direct sunlight. On the other hand, so if your expectation is leaf, maybe coriander, uh, spinach or palak or maybe lettuce or dill or maybe methi or peno Greek. So where your expectation is only leaf, you are not growing them for the seed purpose. If you are growing them for the seed purpose, that's a different issue. But at least uh, in our kitchens that we use them as leafy vegetables. So in such cases that you can, you can grow them with less uh, light, maybe two hours of direct sunlight is more than sufficient uh, for growing these leafy vegetables. So I am repeating, I am repeating here that it is direct sunlight, four to five hours of direct sunlight if your expectation is fruit or tubers. Two to three hours of direct sunlight if your expectation is only leaf, for example, maybe even wheat grass. So many times today nutritionists are suggesting wheat grass. So you need not go for uh, or search, start searching for wheat grass. So you can grow them in uh, the limited spaces if you are having direct sunlight maybe of uh, two to three hours of direct sunlight. So uh, the next point generally is that uh, we are not that kind. We are not having that kind of luxury in in urban spaces. Many times that we may not be having uh, direct sunlight always. See, we are all staying in apartment complexes uh, with flats maybe having uh, the west facing, east facing, north, south. So that kind of balconies that we may have. We may be having the uh, windows uh, covered with grasses. We may be having the extended balconies covered with uh, the maybe uh, transparent roofs uh, or you may be having the drawing rooms where the uh, um, uh, transparent grass is provided. So it is a well-lit house or well-lit balcony but it is not direct sunlight. So many times you may be having very good uh, terrace space, you may be having very good uh, ground space but uh, uh, next to uh, the space that you may be having in coconut tree or a mango tree or some other type of trees where uh, you will have the shade. So under such conditions, so we always get the questions, the what kind of crops can be grown. So as I was uh, telling you, so it is direct sunlight, without direct sunlight growing crops are very difficult. Under such situations, so you can grow to some extent leafy vegetables, you have to adjust, you have to adopt and you have to start growing only leafy vegetables. If you grow the um, fruit uh, vegetables like chilli, tomato and other things, so the plants may not perform that good. See, I, I, am, I am sitting in the balcony of our house with a west uh, uh, facing uh, balcony. So where we have uh, the um, flowering plants, this vinca or the uh, periwinkle. So uh, this is okay that this is having few flowers. But even then, if you have, uh, had given it a very good condition of light, it would have performed much better. Uh, the kind of uh, the nutrition, the kind of uh, care that we are taking. So it would have performed better if the light is good. 
so light is always a limitation for many of these kind of plants of course this kind of situation is good for the ornamentals the um, maybe uh, the um, crotons maybe um, the syngoniums or you can grow uh, maybe uh, anthuriums orchids so these kind of crops will come up very nicely uh, in this kind of balconies where light is a limitation another question generally uh, we get uh, as, as uh, terrace gardening or urban uh, foodscape facilitators is that sir uh, in summer that it is uh, too hot on our terrace should we have a shade net though it is true that there, there is a there is a relationship between light and heat but in in this situation on this kind of situation in such situations the plants suffer because of heat not because of light all the plants especially the vegetables where your expectation is in very robust healthy growth the the plants need more light more the light better is the growth so if the temperature is high so during summer so you have to think of uh, methods practices to cool down the temperature in the in the garden spaces or to reduce the temperature in the in the, uh, the in the microclimate so you may have to use maybe uh, wet gunny bags or maybe uh, cool pads or you may have to keep um, maybe some uh, um, water pots in the gardens you can water two three times a day so that way that you can reduce the temperature in the in the growing medium or in the uh, in the microclimate so on the other hand if you start putting the shade net so many times people ask us sir should we have a shade net so uh, to reduce the temperature so uh, there is there is lots of difference by putting a shade net so you are reducing the light you you may not be reducing the temperature that much but sometimes it is inevitable you may have to use shade net uh, to um, to avoid monkeys uh, may not be shade net but net to avoid monkeys to uh, avoid birds to avoid squirrels so that time so you have to make sure that at least the uh, the mesh size is uh, not less than uh, 0.5 square centimeter it should be always wider and uh, um, bigger mesh so that light uh, pass through at least 60 70 percent of the light uh, pass through and uh, the plants get sufficient maximum light for them to um, enjoy and relish and grow nicely So another point generally uh, we get uh, as facilitator once again uh, is sir we are not having sufficient light so but we have sufficient space so can we consider uh, having artificial light maybe uh, electricity or through uh, solar power uh, whatever may be the case so that is not correct so uh, urbanites or uh, as the uh, the uh, um, urban uh, um, foodscape as we are doing uh, uh, for uh, our own purposes so it is better to have the natural sunlight for growing uh, plants so this kind of uh, artificial light maybe uh, the electricity or solar power is very good or very practical for uh, laboratory situations maybe in tissue culture laboratories or maybe in uh, uh, research and development uh, wings of uh, certain uh, um, uh, uh, crops so for us uh, as urban gardeners it is always better to use the uh, the natural sunlight uh, using the artificial light uh, is uh, too much of energy that you are consuming and it is not practical uh, for us to grow uh, different type of uh, crop plants so to conclude uh, we need to understand that it is direct sunlight it is not just simply light so minimum 4 to 5 hours of light is required for the growth of different type of uh, uh, vegetable plants so in case that if you have to adjust see uh, uh, if you are not having sufficient light if you are having only uh, light uh, maybe one or two hours of light in the morning or maybe one or two hours of light in the uh, in the afternoon it is better to use that kind of spaces for growing only leafy vegetables instead of using that kind of spaces for growing fruit vegetables uh, keep watching our uh, YouTube uh, episodes, YouTube channel on Bricks Bio. Thank you for watching this particular episode.